this week I'm continuing my siege builds with the most important weapon of them all, the catapult. I made a handful of these as I was going through because you can never have too many. So join me as I make these catapults. I started out with a handful of laminated popsicle sticks. These are four popsicle sticks that are PVA glued together. And then I'm going to make the basic frame for all of these catapults. I'm going to make it uh, 3 inches by 2 inches. So just mark all of those out and then cut them out with a saw. And because I'm making 3, I'm just tripling all of the pieces that I'm making. And you should really do this before you cut them see how they're really small now but I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add some texture to them by using a file and this can be real dangerous so you got to be careful because these things are pretty sharp and then I'm just gonna glue them together to form that square frame that'll be the base of the whole thing if you wanted, you could just make these out of single popsicle sticks, but I like the bigger, more chunky look that several popsicle sticks gives me. Once that frame is all dry, I start building the rest of the frame that'll hold the bar that will catch the arm of the catapult. So I make it two inches tall and then I build some cross beams that'll hold this first beam up. And the way I do this is I place it against my cutting mat and try to like envision it along the side of my entire piece. This takes quite a little bit of fiddling as with all of these projects, but once you get it done, I think it looks pretty good. And once I have a whole bunch cut for all of them, I start by marking out where that first inch mark will go. So this will go one inch from the front and glue in, and then the other pieces will stick onto that. I then come through later on and I put a little bit of glue in between where the uh, little support bars meet, that way just to make it a little bit stronger. I then start making that arm that's going to send our payload flying. So I start with a four inch piece of popsicle stick and then I cut several inch pieces and they will be laminated against the side to kind of form that base. First off, a square basket is a lot easier than trying to make it round, but also it means you can fit a medium sized creature from Dungeons and Dragons within this little catapult. Uh, if you need to do that for whatever reason. And of course, when that is all well and dry, I then make some little side pieces just to complete that basket shape. So whatever you put in there won't go flopping and flailing about before reaching its target. To glue this on, I use some tacky glue and instead of trying to fiddle around and put glue directly on the wood, I just put a line of glue down onto my parchment paper and then dip the wood into that. I found that was a lot easier than trying to fiddle around with gluing onto the specific spots. And then jumping back to the main piece, I cut these little rectangles out of cardstock. And these will form the axle holders that will hold the wheels to, to the base. And this is a lot easier than drilling a hole or anything like that because you just bend a little triangle shape in the cardstock and that'll hold really well once you put some tacky glue on it and hold it to the wood. Now we've got axles, but we do not have wheels yet. I make these wheels a bit smaller than the last time. I use this piece of cork instead of the bottle. And these are made 
basically exactly the same as all the other siege items that I've been building. A single corrugated piece of cardboard and I cut some circles out of that. And I'd be very careful with an X-Acto knife trying to get it as circular as I can. But I don't mind if it's too rough around the edges. Then stick some PVA glue onto the circles and glue them down onto some popsicle sticks. Because these wheels are smaller I can fit more to each popsicle stick as well. Once they're dry, I go back to the X-Acto knife and cut them out and use some clippers just to get a nice round shape around the edges. You can come through with some sandpaper as well, just to smooth out any rough edges. However, they'll get covered up by this next step of the cardstock. Strips of cardstock roughly cut to the same thickness and glued down with hot glue. And just run them around the edge just to cover up that cardboard corrugation as well as look like some metal banding around the edge of the wheels. I then go back to my really tiny coffee stir sticks and add them on as little metal banding holding the entire wheel together. While I wait for those to completely dry, I start finishing off any small details on the entire structure. Cut off the pieces of cardstock and add on a little bar to catch the arm of the catapult. And this is just with a piece of popsicle stick and I'm just eyeballing it. Uh, but I will stick that on with some tacky glue. That way it doesn't go getting blown away by the wind while it's drying. When that is all well and dry, or at least close, I take a drill and a drill bit that's roughly the same size as a toothpick and I drill holes into the side. Now it's important here to have the holes be of a decent size that you can fit a piece of string because now we're going to go back to that builder's line and I've got some painted brown here. I'm going to double it up and feed it through so that way the two lengths of it are going through and the hoop is on the outer side. And if you're struggling, you can just use a skewer to kind of push it in, or a needle. And now to hold that string in place, as well as act as a bit of a handle, we're going to stick a piece of barbecue skewer in, and that'll hold it and stop it from moving. And then onto the other side, we're just going to tie a knot in it a little bit, and then before we complete the knot, add a little bit more uh, of that barbecue skewer onto the other side and then tie the knot tight. And because I don't trust my knot tying skills all that much, I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue here as well. Now this rope here is what is going to make the catapult actually function. It isn't exactly how they used to do it. But at this tiny scale, it works pretty well. So, to make it work, we just take our little popsicle stick catapult arm and we put it in between the two string lines. And we tighten either side. Now, if you have an extra pair of hands to help you here, you can tie both sides down at the same time. And you tie them facing towards the direction you want the catapult to be propelled. And it works pretty well. Now, of course, our final piece is those wheels. I'm just going to use a piece of barbecue skewer to puncture a hole in one side of the wheel, roughly in the center. And then cut that to length and use some tacky glue to hold the wheels in. Placing the piece of barbecue skewer into that hole that we skewered. That way it will roughly hold itself in place while the glue dries. And then a really simple paint job, just a burnt sienna covering everything, focusing on all the wooden pieces. And then I'll use a dry brush of a lighter burnt sienna and mix a little bit of yellow in there as well. And this is quite a heavy dry brush because the first coat wasn't 100% coverage. So this will catch most of the other areas. And then all of the metal pieces I go through with the gunmetal gray. And there are our finished catapults. I got a little piece of foam here and you can see it doesn't quite work if it's not tight enough. But if it's too tight, you run the risk of breaking it. 
so don't try to keep it at tension for too long. But you can see here, when I tighten it up a little bit more, it is a lot more snappy. And in fact, the whole thing almost wants to roll away. So that's a really cool catapult. And I made a whole bunch, and you can even fit your own miniatures inside it. Be careful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.